Sample size determination using the rule of thumb. Today, I want to take you through how you can determine the appropriate sample size using the rule of thumb. Let's say for instance, you need some feedback on your customer's satisfaction. How big should be the size of your sample? This is a frequently asked question by my students in order to answer this question let us explore. Factors that determine selection of sample size in a scientific research study. 1. Size of population If we have to cover a larger population we need larger sample too. Population variability. The more heterogeneous your population, the bigger the required sample size. An initial estimate of this value is the standard deviation of one or more samples. The less the variability the less sample you need. 3. Margin of error. Since no sample will be perfect, you need to decide how much error to allow. The less error you're willing to accept, the bigger the sample size needs to be. In today's class, I only want to answer the question when is the rule of thumb applicable in sample size selection? We shall be exploring this topic in details in my subsequent lessons. So ensure you don't miss any of this classes by subscribing and turning on your notification button and preferable become a special monthly member. First of all, let us note that inadequate sample size is one of the statistical errors in scientific studies. 1. It compromises data quality. 2. It affects directly the validity of the study results. It, therefore, means that when having an inadequate sample size, your data may fail to generalize and not significant and therefore the result you get cannot be used for making serious decisions affecting the organization. Generally, it is important to note that sample size depends on the type of study you want to carry out. So if your survey involves customer feedback assessment, or tourists exits assessment and probably you want to use a simple random sampling method then the rule of thumb is minimum is 100 and the maximum is 1000. So anyone doing a survey perhaps for tourists who joined the country in September and probably they were only 88 tourists who came to the country only need to conduct census. To approximate the correct sample size takes 10% of the target population so long as the result you get does not exceed 1000. For instance, in a population of 8000. The sample size will be 8000 asterisk 10% equals 800 in a population of 80000 asterisk 10% equals 8000. In this case use 1000. In any case, you calculate 10% and if it exceeds 1000 you take 1000. This simply means sampling more than 1000 does not increase the accuracy of the result. It has only become a waste of money and time you take. Therefore we conclude that in any survey where you need feedback from a specific target group range of 100 as the minimum and 1000 as the maximum is appropriate. The next question I would like to ask you is what influences whether you go for a minimum of 100 or a maximum which is 1000? Let me address this question as follows. You can choose a number closer to the minimum under the following conditions. 1. You are working under time and budget constrained situations. 2. You only perhaps require a rough estimate of the results. 3. When the target population is homogeneous and you expect the respondents to give the same answers. 4. Perhaps you will not stratify the group into different categories then these become ground enough to go for small size. 5. The decision you will make out from the result does not have serious consequences. However in every case where the opposite of the above cases they choose a value towards the maximum of 1000. Therefore, the larger the sample size, the more accurate the results and therefore findings from such studies can be used to make a generalization and make serious decisions affecting productivity and budget changes in an organization. This method of sample size selection is not applicable under the following scenarios. 1. When conducting very large surveys like economic surveys, youth employability surveys, demographic surveys for specific population. 2. A survey meant to establish project impact where we have the intervention group compared with the control group. 3. A survey that uses non-random sampling or cluster S sampling. 4. Survey where you will use complex statistical tools to analyze like probit, logit models and multivariate statistics.
So until next time, I will train you how to select appropriate sample sizes for complex situations and when are you allowed to use a sample size table, sample size calculator, etc. Do not miss any of our classes. Subscribe and join the membership of our video for special category training. Post any of your questions to the YouTube link below I will answer all of your questions and please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our presentations. Subscribe and become a member of our YouTube family for